Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore life between the keys. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and I am so honored and thrilled to have a fabulous pianist in this episode. Please welcome Dr. Charles Petaway. Charles, wonderful to have you on the show. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, Charles, you are the, the chair of the music department, the, actually the whole arts department, Visual Performing Visual Arts, performing and arts museum studies at, at Lincoln University. University right, wow, it has right. been such an honor to know you and to hear you play. You're such a magnificent pianist. Oh, well, thank you. Can you share a little bit about how you got started in music? Yeah, I, I started when I was six. And, uh, you know, we come from a musical family. My Aunt Ida, as a matter of fact, was church organist. And uh, my mother, I had asthma, as I said, and, and she said that I, I should start taking lessons of something, of some sort. So the piano was it. So uh, my grandmother gave me a piano, it was an upright, and I started taking lessons, studying with my Aunt Ida for about two years. Uh, and she said to my mother, I can't teach him anything else, so he needs another teacher. Wow. So then, you know, we went through some neighborhood teachers, and then somebody said, well, maybe he should go to Philadelphia Musical Academy. And I was lucky enough, I auditioned for Clement Petrillo, who was my mentor. Mm. I didn't know it at the time, but I was with him for almost 12 years. Mm. I mean, throughout my entire uh, undergrad matriculation, he was my professor. And then we were good friends. I mean, he helped me through different competitions that I was winning. And, uh, you know, just he was just a great human being. And... Um, he was Italian, so he had a lot of sayings that he would say all the time. And, like what? Well, uh, I mean, you know, you're only as good as you purport to be. So you've <laughs> always got to, you know, show forth and do the best you can. Mm. And you've always got to work. And you always got to have a humble mind about things and be respectful of everybody, even the dummies and the nitwits. <laughs> so kind, he was that kind. Wise. Yeah, right. But he was a stickler for finger technique and sound and he had a phenomenal technique himself his Chopin was just exquisite I thought but uh, and you know he, he, he also taught uh, Andre Watts for a time wow wow yeah but, so he was quite a renowned teacher and as I said a mentor to me and I'll never forget him now you also had a very extensive career in Europe tell us a little bit about your European studies well it, it's it's kind career. of interesting because um, uh, I found out that there was the Fontainebleau Music Festival. It's the American Conservatory, which is, it's in, well, it's in Fontainebleau and France. And um, so I decided to audition for it in New York. And I went up and I played Prokofiev Seventh Sonata. And uh, actually, I, I think I played it rather well. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen too often. <laughs> I played some beta of some Bach as well, and uh, they chose me. Wow! And so I, I got a full scholarship to study at Fontainebleau. Wow, beautiful! And I work with Nadia Boulanger. And she's uh, a, an incredibly famous oh piano God. teacher in the classical music. Oh world. Just, my Wow! Gosh. What a legend! What was she well, like? Well, I mean, you know, uh, let's see: Leonard Bernstein, right. Aaron Copland. They all studied with I'm her. The, I'm in the presence of a legend right no, now. Look at this. No, Ooh, but, wow. but they all studied with her. Yeah. And, you know, surprisingly, she helped me by writing letters of recommendation that opened doors, you know, uh, in, in like concerts and things like that. Louise Talma, uh, I don't know if you know her, but she was a pianist uh, and a composer. Now, there's a very important competition that Ms. Boulanger encouraged you. Right, it, it was the first uh, Robert Cassatsu international piano competition. And she says, Pedway, I want you to uh, enter that competition. I said, oh, madam, I, I really don't want to do that. She will enter the competition. <laughs> so it was in three weeks. Oh, my. Well, I, I knew most of the repertoire, but, you know, but getting ready for a competition like that, I mean, you've got to practice. I was practicing nine hours a day. But the great thing is, in France, you know, everybody stops at lunch for a little wine. <laughs> so after lunch, I always had to take a nap because <laughs> I couldn't play. <laughs> but anyway, I got up and, you know, but there were a lot of other musicians there. I mean, people that I know now as, as friends, we've been friends throughout the years. Uh, and, and we all had a single-minded determination, you know, to, to be musicians. Mm. 
And so that was the great thing about it, and, and developing friendships and exploring the countryside, but being in a musical atmosphere. It was just wonderful. And then being around people like Zeno Francescati, mm. a, a great uh, violinist, and um, uh, Madame Cassette Sue, mm -hmm. Gabby Cassette Sue. She, she was my teacher Robert's there. Wife, yeah. yeah. Now, the, the important thing about this competition was you won. <laughs> yeah, I, I was you shocked. You won the very first Cassette Sue competition. Yeah, I won That's the first amazing. prize. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really something. I mean, but I did play well, <laughs> you know, but I went in and one of the few times that I really wasn't nervous. I mean, because there were all these judges there. I mean, there were about 15 judges and, you know, normally I'd be so frightened I couldn't play because, you know, I would normally shake and things like that. What, what do you attribute that to? How, how do you think you were able to be so calm? Because I think it was a new experience for me being in France. Uh, in the countryside and just being away from the, you know, rigmarole of, of the country, you know. So it relaxed me and going to, for wood uh, walks in the woods, you know, in, in the black forest and things like that. It was just, it was just amazing. And looking at the gardens at Fontainebleau and then going to Versailles mm -hmm. and, and seeing the gardens and the water fountains, it was like a dream. Wow. So I was in a dream. So when I went and played, I loved the music. And you know, you can't play unless you really love the music. And it just, it just came together. Now, speaking of music, one of the unique things about this show is the fact that we invite our guests to choose from a range of pianos to perform their works on. You've got quite a program you're going to perform for us, Charles, and you've chosen to play them on this Yamaha CF6 hand-built grand piano. Why did you choose this instrument? Well, I'm always looking at an, for an instrument who, one, is very sympathetic to my touch. Okay, but in addition to that, it has to have those singable qualities. I like a ringing soprano, and I like a really strong, robust bass. And this piano is very subtle. It has everything. And I know you said it was a handmade yes, instrument. Yes. So, I mean, it just felt well under my fingers. Everything was just right there. Mm. And uh, the, the overall sound, the homogenization of sound was all just so wonderful. It all comes together. It doesn't happen with every piano. I mean, you, you, you play some pianos and they, they sound great. It's but certain ranges, certain, yeah. Yeah, but there's always something that's missing. Mm -hmm. This piano had everything that I needed. Now, share with yeah. us what you're going to play. You've got some wonderful pieces you're going to share with us. Well, uh, my first piece is Gretchen at the Spinning Wheel. It's a song by Schubert, Franz Schubert. But it was arranged uh, in a piano transcription mm. by Franz Liszt. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that means it's going to be lots of notes. It's going to be really, really hard. Okay. Right. And what's the other piece you're going to play? Uh, the second piece that I'm going to play uh, was Fifile. Uh, that's one of the Transcendental Etudes. Uh, it's Will of the Wisp. It's uh, Transcendental Etude number five. By e Franz flat. Liszt. Another yeah, by Liszt Franz piece. Liszt. Right. Uh, and then the third piece. Now, this uh, is a fun one. I love this yeah, one. Yeah. Um, my favorite things. This is an arrangement by English pianist Stephen Howe. Oh, wow. Uh, so they're fun pieces to play. <laughs> a lot of fingers. If you haven't caught the theme of this, Dr. Petaway is a master technician. I can't wait to hear you play. Oh, well, thank you.
Charles, that was amazing.、Oh. So many colors. Your fingers just fly around, but you make it look so easy. I mean, it's, you're like you're hardly breaking a sweat. How do you do that? Practice, <laughs> practice, four hours a day. But you make it look again. I don't know how much of it's the piano helping you make oh, it easy. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course, the piano is there. It's right. In, it's right there at my、yeah. fingertips. It just looks so effortless. It doesn't work that way all the time. With <laughs> certain pianos, you've got to work hard. Yeah. You know, and I won't、yeah. name any pianos, but no, this piano was a joy to play. And you know, every time you do a recording like this. You're always, you know, a little anxious because you never know what kind of instrument you're going to have.、Yeah. The other night I did a recording at a studio, and、um, piano was okay,、yeah. but I was on pins and needles. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But no, tonight I felt really comfortable. You sound a phenomenal.、Charles. Well, you make people feel comfortable <laughs> too. <laughs> I try, I try, Charles. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible talent. Your students are so lucky to work with you.、They're... Oh, I don't know about that. That's, oh gosh, here he is again. Oh, I don't think. Wait,、something. and then is the lesson over yet? <laughs> Charles, again, thank you so much for being on the show. What an honor to have my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. And if you enjoyed watching this, do be sure to subscribe so that we can let you know whenever we have new episodes. For the Cunningham Piano Show, I'm Hugh Sung. Thank you so much for spending time with us. We will see you next time.